Welcome back. We're on the fourth part of this week's Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. Um, this is Saturday, January 9th, 2021. And on the Hebrew calendar, it is Tibet 25 in the year 5781. We are going to begin the Brit Kadasha, which this week we have Acts chapter 7, verses 17 to 29. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 18 to 25. We're going to begin the first reading now in Acts chapter 7, verses 17 to 29. But as the time drew near for the promise God had sworn to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt until there arose another king over Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. So they're recapping this, you know, and this is in the New Testament, the New Covenant, um, the, the Brit Kadasha, dealing with our people with cruel cunning. This king mistreated our fathers and forced them to abandon their infants so they would not survive. At this time, Moses was born extraordinary before God. For three months, he was nurtured in his father's house. And when he was set out, Pharaoh's daughter took him and raised him as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was powerful in his words and deeds. When he was approaching 40 years of age, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, Benai Israel. When he saw one of them being treated unjustly, he went to the defense of the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He was assuming that his brothers understood that by his hand God was delivering them, but they did not understand. So on the next day, he appeared to them as they were fighting. He tried to reconcile them in shalom, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong one another? But the one doing wrong to his neighbor pushed him away, saying, Who appointed you ruler and judge over us? You don't want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday, do you? And at this remark, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. And that's the end of that section. And we're going to now read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 18 to 25. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. However, in Messiah's community, I would rather speak five words with my mind, so I may also instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers and sisters, stop being children in your thinking. Rather be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. In the prophets, it is written, by those with strange tongues and by the lips of strangers, I will speak to this people. And not even then will they listen to me, says Adonai. Therefore, tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers, but prophecy is a sign, not for unbelievers, but for believers. So if Messiah's whole community comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and uninstructed or unbelieving people come in, won't they say that you are crazy? But if all are prophesying, some unbelieving or ungifted person comes in, he is convicted by all. He is called to account by all the secrets of his heart become known and so he will fall down on his face and worship God declaring God really is among you. That ends the Brit Kadasha reading uh, for this week. So I'm going to do a quick recapping of the entire Shabbat service starting with the Torah And as we begin this week's tour portion, we know that Joseph had died. We know that the Benaiah of Israel was in Egypt uh, for a purpose because um, actually the Pharaoh of Joseph's time um, was actually very gracious to them and gave them Goshen to actually settle into so so they would be taken care of these uh, these were uh, the people that came were actually joseph's family um and um 
they multiplied, of course, as they were in the land. Um, Joseph dies. The Pharaoh that was um, running Egypt also during Joseph's time had passed away as well. And now we've got years have gone by and there's a new Pharaoh here who didn't acknowledge anything um, of, of Joseph or um and they were actually the Egyptians were actually concerned that there that uh, there were so many Israelites versus uh, Egyptians, and so they um, decided to trick them into slavery. Um, then when that didn't work, uh, they wanted the the midwives to kill the infants at birth, and when that didn't work, they wanted them thrown into the Nile River. And lo and behold, Moses was born um, to Jochebed. Um, Jochebed um, is 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 his actual Hebrew uh, mother, um, and of course uh, she was the daughter of of, of a Le Levite, um, and um, they also had a daughter Miriam and a son Aaron, and these are uh, Moses's natural born siblings. Now, um, what happened was um, Moses was born and um, he actually lived in his, you know, in his, with his mom and, and, and dad for, for, several, uh, for several months before uh, they couldn't hide him anymore. So to save him and spare his life, his mother um, put him in a waterproof basket and basically and loaded him down the Nile, and Miriam, his sister, uh, witnessed um, him being pulled out of the Nile by Pharaoh's daughter. And she approached Pharaoh's daughter, and Pharaoh's daughter said, you know, to get, you know, that, that she would pay a, nur a wet nurse to actually take care of him. Um, and, but, and what happened is, is she, of course, brought Moses's mother, and um, Pharaoh's daughter said when he was weaned that he needed to be brought to the, the palace and she would be his mother at that point. So that's what happened. Moses grew up in, in Egypt. He, uh, he actually, he actually um, grew up in the ways of Egypt, but then he learned that he was a Hebrew, uh, and he went out um, among and saw the suffering of his people, and um, there was a Hebrew man that was being viciously, um, you know, dealt with by an Egyptian, and Moses actually killed him and buried him, and when he went out the next day to break up a squabble, um, the, the two Hebrews that were fighting actually um, questioned him, you know, well, said to him, you know, who do you think you are, basically, uh, to, to tell us what to do? Are you going to kill us now? And Moses realized that, you know, other people knew uh, that he was in danger. And, of course, Pharaoh was seeking to, uh, seeking after him and wanting to kill him as well. So he had fled from Egypt to Midian there. In, in Midian, he was married and he was living in, you know, living with his wife and two sons, Gershom and Eliezer, and his wife's name was Zipporah, and um, God called him um, after, after a time, God, God saw and heard the cries of, of the children of Israel, and uh, Moses actually was the one that God chose. So um, Moses actually was trying, was actually questioning God, um, um, saying he's not, he, he didn't feel like he was capable of doing all that. And God basically said, he would put the words into his mouth. So we saw the wonder of the burning bush. And there's all kinds of miracles that, that are, happen in the book of Exodus as we're going to be seeing. Um, stunning uh, miracles and and wonders and signs from God. Um, so 
he questioned, uh, what if the people don't believe? Who do I say sent me? And God told him, uh, say, I, I am sent you, uh, basically. And so, you know, what happened is, is, is God allowed Aaron to be his spokesperson. Um, they talked to the, the children of Israel. Finally, um, they realized that, yeah, um, when they, when he said, I am sent me, they realized it was, it was God that sent him and, um, they fell down on their face and began worshiping, um, Aaron and Moses went to Pharaoh who hardened his heart, said, no, I'm just going to make their work even harder because who are you, you know, and I don't know who your God is basically. And so this is how it ended. And Moses, uh, the people were angry at Moses and Aaron because he felt that, um, made their situation worse so Moses cries out to Adonai um, cries out to Adonai you know what have you done you, you know my coming here has made the situation worse for these people and God said I caused you know Pharaoh's heart to be hard but now you're going to see what I will do for he shall let the people go because of a greater might, indeed, because of a greater might, he shall drive them from his land. So that was the Torah portion, and a really brief snapshot of the half Torah. Um, we have um, kind of, you know, like like I said, you know, we're talking about, um, and it shall come past, kind of pass on that day, that a great shofar shall be sounded, and those who were lost in the land of Assyria shall come and they will be dispersed into the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord on the holy mountain. So there's deliverance, there's promise and deliverance again. Um, you know, um, actually the half Torah begins with Jacob shall take root, Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and fill the whole world with fruit. Um, talking about being brought back after being in, you know, being in, you know, in a situation, um, and also the same thing in, in Jeremiah. So it's, it's redemption, it's freedom from bondage. It's, 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 you know, when they're, when, when Benai Israel is right with, with God, that he will, um, make sure that the enemies are taken care of as well. And, um, that will, um, you know, redemption and homecoming will happen. So that, that's kind of the theme, you know, with this. Um, so then we look at Acts 17 to 29. Acts um, chapter 7, 17 to 29, we are talking about um, the history there. It, it is going back to talking about the history of Moses. Um, so that, you know, and how he fled from, from Egypt. And I'm actually going to also continue that um, to um, verse 35, because it does continue. When 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, in the flame of a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. But when he came to, up to look, there came the voice of Adonai, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled in fear and did not dare to look. But Adonai said to him, take the sandals off your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. And I've heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. Now come, let me send you to Egypt. Then Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who appointed you as ruler and judge, is the one whom God sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. Um, so <clears throat> it is a recapping of actually the Torah when you think about it. So that was that segment of, <clears throat> of Acts. Uh, and from the passage in Corinthians, it deals with the importance of the gift of tongues 
in relation to the gift of prophecy as they pertain to the edification of the church of Mashiach, of Jesus' church. And here the apostle alludes to a passage from the half Torah, which we read in Isaiah, um, especially at chapter 28, 11 to 12, to demonstrate that the phenomena of tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. But the gift of prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. So that is the end of all of the readings for this week's Shabbat service. I'm going to close this in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your mighty and powerful word. We are about to see your wonders um, as, as Moses will see firsthand um, and participate in, as all the unbelievers will, will see and fear the one true living God. And you still exist on the, on the throne Father God, and there's so many people that do not take you seriously, but you are about to show those, uh, and, and, and all of us as well, who you are. You are the creator. You have this, the last say in anything, on any matter. You are in control over every king of this earth, has no power uh, above you. Absolutely not. The devil thought that he did, but the devil was cast out of heaven. You are almighty God. You are the one who is in control of everything. You will have the final say in all matters. We thank you for that. Um, we, we are very thankful for that, that you are uh, the one in control. You are a just and merciful God. You don't want your people to perish that you have created. Uh, we know that. We love you, Father. And we love your word. We love the sacrifice that you made by sending your one and only son to die for our sins so that we may be redeemed and reconciled to you so we can spend eternity with you. Um, and we thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, Amen, and Amen. And with that, I'm going to move into an altar call. I think I'm going to close this segment just a little short because I'm going to make part five the altar call and then close out Shabbat service. <laughs> 